you in this congregation, I feel sure, are familiar with Warner Solomon's famous painting of the head of Christ, known as the Son of Man. It is our very special privilege to have Mr. Solomon on the platform with us tonight. We shall see him recreate on this easel his inspirational portrait, the Son of Man. We are also fortunate in having with us tonight the North Park College Choir, which will furnish special background music while Mr. Solomon is at the easel. And now I would like to introduce Warner Solomon. Thank you, Pastor. It's a great privilege for me to bring another testimony to my Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians, fourth chapter, sixth verse, we read, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This truth has been my happy experience since early childhood. In my latter years, it has fallen to my pleasant lot to show forth some of the lovely attributes of my Lord by means of the divine gifts dedicated to him. God has, in a wonderful way, led me into this pattern of life, saving my soul from eternal perdition unto a blessed hope and joy for life with him on high. By his grace, I have been saved from many alluring temptations and pitfalls with their serious consequences. For all of this, I am deeply grateful. With a humble but rejoicing heart, I join with St. Paul where he says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. And now, I would like to begin the portrait. Say that again. Got me looking like an old fashioned clipper ship. You'll get used to it. And remember what the doctor said no handsprings. The way you've got me rigged, I'll be lucky if I can draw a deep breath. Is this the way you treat all your patients? Only the tough ones. 
especially med students. Oh. Yep. Anyone makes a worse patient than a doctor, it's a med student. Well, I guess I know where I stand. Now tell me, what's wrong with med students, Miss Johnson? Nothing that a couple of weeks in traction won't fix. Well, I'll drop by later to see how you're getting along. Miss Richards is on the floor in case you need anything. What a character. Don't let her fool you. That's just a front. Diamond in the rough, huh? She's really wonderful. No one can handle the emergency room the way she does. Was she in there when they brought me in last night? She certainly was. And she stayed on duty two extra hours just to help patch you up. Make it a Florence Nightingale, huh? You're in no position to be making fun of the nursing profession, sir. That must have been quite an accident you were in. Pretty bad, I guess. Some people shouldn't be allowed on the road. This one didn't even slow up when he came to the intersection. Well, at least this will give you a chance to look at hospital routine through a patient's eye. An experience I can do without. Thank you, Miss... Karen Richards, Miss Richards, to you. You have to take my blood pressure? Yes. You have to check on possible head injuries. See? You might even learn something while you're here as a patient. I doubt it. Like I was saying, this patient's eye view is not exactly my idea of fun. Besides, I don't feel that way about practicing. When I hang out my shingle, I become an expert technician. Like a good mechanic. Perform a service for the patient, and he pays me for that service. That's all there is to it. I see. What's more, I'm going to specialize. Under this family doctor stuff for me. All mixed up in people's private lives and everything. That's kind of a one-track approach. Maybe. But it's mighty practical. I suppose you're an idealist. Service to mankind and all that. Not exactly. You see, I plan on going into the mission field. I think of it as service to God. Is that so? Well, you probably confirm a pet theory of mine. Really? Ten to one, you come from a religious family. Your whole background from early childhood is probably crammed with religious teaching. Well, my parents were Christians, if that's what you mean. But you're wrong if you think that's the reason I want to become a missionary. Oh, I don't mean that you're consciously carrying out your parents' ideas. With a strong religious background like that, you couldn't help but be conditioned to their way of thinking. But that isn't it at all. It was my own decision. Sure. But what made you decide the way you did? Because I sincerely believe that's what God wants me to do. Hey, what are you trying to do? Squeeze my arm off? Oh, I'm... Just because we disagree, that's no reason for trying to cripple me. I said I was sorry. It's the way with these religious people. You disagree with What's them. What's this about religious people? Oh, good morning, Chaplain. If you're busy, I can drop back later. Oh, no, I'm through. I'm sure Mr. Powell has a great deal to discuss with you. Well, fine. I'm Chaplain Aldine. I stopped in to see how you're getting along, Jim. Very nice of you, Chaplain. I gather that you and Miss Richards were discussing religion. I guess it was more of an argument than a discussion. And, of course... I'm a little outnumbered around here. Outnumbered? Well, I mean, religious pictures, missionary nurses, and... And chaplains? <laughs> I hope you won't find it too oppressive, Jim. But you see, this hospital is operated by the Mission Covenant Church, and we believe that helping people physically and helping them spiritually go hand in hand. I suppose that's one way of putting it. But not the way you'd put it. Well, frankly, no. Seems to me that psychiatry and psychosomatics are a lot more practical than religion. More practical? I'm not too sure I follow you, Jim. Well, 
they do the same job only on a scientific basis. A man with a guilt complex, for instance. There was a time when there was nowhere else to turn but to religion. Today, he takes his problem to a psychiatrist, finds out the hidden reasons behind his guilt, and gets rid of them. Yes. Yes, psychiatry certainly is valuable in such cases. But what would you do about the man with genuine guilt? Huh? You see, Jim, a psychiatrist can help a man get rid of his neurotic guilt. But psychiatry doesn't have the final answer for the, the real conscious guilt that we all have. And that, Jim, is where the gospel of Christ comes in. Oh, I think Jesus was a great leader in his time. But organized religion has given us a false picture of him. In what way, Jim? By making him out to be the son of God and all that. What sort of a person do you think he was? He was a great humanitarian. Far ahead of his time. Interested in teaching us more about social responsibilities, equalities principles of justice. You know quite a bit about Christ? In a general sort of way, you know. Sermon on the Mount, Golden Rule. Well, you'll find there's a good deal more than that to his story in the New Testament, Jim. In fact, some of the claims that Christ made were so startling that no mere man could have made them without being a fraud. I'd like to talk to you about this again sometime. I've got nothing but time, Chaplain. Good. In that case, would you do me a favor, Jim? Would you take a look through this modern translation of the Gospels? And then we can talk about it later. Huh? Okay. Thanks. I'll be seeing you later. Oh, and by the way, Jim, I wouldn't push Miss Richards too far. She's a pretty dedicated young lady. You're telling me. and my leg kept me awake for a while and I leafed through the Bible the chaplain had left with me. I myself am the road, replied Jesus, and the truth and the life. Those words suddenly took on a new meaning and I turned back to start my reading at the beginning of John. At the beginning, God expressed himself. That personal expression was with God and was God and he existed with God from the beginning so the expression of God became a human being and lived among us we saw his splendor the splendor as of the father's only son full of grace and truth as I read on the person of Jesus Christ took form in my mind, like a picture being sketched by an inspired artist. I solemnly assure you that the man who hears what I have to say and believes in the one who has sent me has eternal life. myself am the bread of life. The man who comes to me will never be hungry, and the man who believes in me will never again be thirsty. I am the light of the world. The man who follows me will not walk in the dark but will live his life in the light. I myself am the resurrection and the life. During the next couple of weeks, I did a lot of reading, 
and even more thinking. One afternoon, Chaplain Aldean stopped by for another visit, and we continued our discussion. My reading had given me some new ideas on Christianity. I was beginning to realize that you couldn't explain Christ as just another religious teacher. Meanwhile, I was also developing a growing admiration for a certain student nurse. Mr. James Powell, room 307. That's me. But I thought we agreed you were going to call me Jim. You agreed. I didn't. You know very well nurses aren't allowed to call patients by their first names, especially patients that are going to become doctors. There's an exception to every rule. You tell the director of nurses that. Maybe I will. Don't you dare. All I can say is, you're a lot more dedicated to your career than I am to mine. Oh, I don't think of it as a career at all. The only reason I'm studying nursing because it gives me such a wonderful opportunity to witness for the Lord. I don't quite get it. Don't you understand, Jim? It isn't healing people physically that counts. It's healing their souls. The reason I want to become a nurse is because there are so many more chances to tell the people about the Lord. Patients who are lonely or discouraged or in pain will listen to the gospel when they wouldn't otherwise. There's something about that I don't like. You've learned so much about Christ since you started reading the gospel. Don't you understand that nursing is my way of bringing more people to him? I understand, all right. I understand that it's completely dishonest. Dishonest? Well, what do you mean? You pretend to be interested in people, but all you really care about is converting them to your religion. You know you almost had me fooled. I thought you were real, but you're not. You're a propagandist, that's all. At least I'm honest enough to admit I don't give a hoot about people. Jim, that isn't true at all. But the reason I tell others about the Lord is because I am concerned about them. Ah. Uh, you do it because you think it's your duty. You do it so that you can earn more stars for your crown. <gasps> You're up and around, Jim. I suppose you'll be leaving us pretty soon. Can't be too soon for me. Oh? I had an idea you were beginning to feel at home here. Nope. Like I said at first, this outfit's too religious for me. Well, I thought that through your reading and our talks, you had gotten a new slant on Christianity. Yes. But that's different. I don't see much connection between the teachings of Christ and organized religion today. You prefer disorganized religion? No. What I mean is, most church people today don't take Christianity seriously. And those who do are only interested in saving souls. They aren't interested in people because they have needs as human beings. They only want to convert them. Now, Jesus really cared about people. He cared enough to heal them when they were sick and feed them when they were hungry and comfort them when they were unhappy. Well, Jim, you're certainly right about Christ. And you may be partly right in your criticism of Christians. But I wouldn't be too quick to judge them if I were you. What do you mean? You see, some earnest Christians have a sort of lopsided idea about what it means to serve God. But many times you'll find that their hearts are better than their heads. They have a genuine love for Christ. And they're kind and considerate to other people. After all, that's what counts, isn't it, Jim? Yeah. Yeah.
Why so glum? I didn't know it showed. Like a sore thumb. You want to tell me about it? Wouldn't do any good. Well, try it and see. Well, have you ever found out that someone, well, that someone you thought admired and perhaps respected you really thought you were insincere? It happens every day. We build someone up in our minds, and then we find they aren't as perfect as we thought they were, and we feel betrayed. Then we take it out on the other fellow. Of course, usually we're sorry afterwards, but then it's too late. Hurt feelings and pride are hard to overcome. It takes real humility and Christian love to forgive the person who hurts us. I want to talk to you about this morning. I was all wrong. I didn't... No, you weren't, Jim. You were right. That's why it hurts so much, I guess. You see, I thought your cold-blooded attitude was because you didn't think of your future patients as people. And all the time, there I was making the same mistake in telling people about the Lord. I think... Well, I think we were both wrong. Look, Karen, maybe your theory was wrong, but in actual practice, your rating was pretty high. It's more than I can say for myself. There was no excuse for me. If I had just... Karen, you were the first real Christian I'd ever met. I wanted to believe your Christianity was genuine, and yet I didn't, because it would throw all my neat little theories about religion out the window. Oh, Jim. You should have known that you can't judge Jesus Christ on the poor showing made by some of his followers. Yes, no matter how badly I might fail, Christ would still be all-powerful and still able to meet every one of your needs. I know. But even after I'd read enough of the Bible to begin to understand who Christ was and why he did the things he did, I still had to be sure that it would all apply in someone's life today. Right here and now. Oh, it does, Jim. I can tell you that. But it's something you have to discover for yourself. Yeah, but what are you supposed to do? Well, it's kind of hard to explain. But I think it's mainly just acting on what you've learned about Christ. You've come to realize that he is the son of God. Start treating him accordingly. If you believe that he died for the sins of the world, ask him to forgive your sins. And most important, start putting him first instead of yourself. That's the tough part, isn't it? To let God take over. Still, it doesn't seem as impossible as it did a few weeks ago. And you've helped a lot. Two years now, since that day when one of the most self-centered fellows in the world began trying to put Christ first in his life. One year since the med student who had an easy life all planned set his sights on the mission field. And only a few weeks since he signed up a full-time partner in the Lord's work. And all because he came face to face with the Son of Man. <laughs> 